Welcome back everyone, Watson here with another game in our speedrun series. We have to move pawn to e4, c5 and we're going knight f3 this game. Knight to c6, so we can go for the Rosalimo. Uh, we can also go back into an Alapin with the move pawn to c3. Okay, let, let's go Rosalimo with the move bishop to b5. I think this is becoming more mainline than d4 nowadays. A lot of people would just play the move bishop to b5. I think it's more targeted at the Shevezhnikov and people who play these type of openings because objectively speaking, at least at the high level, these openings are quite solid for black. Um, that's why white is opting for bishop b5 instead. Okay, after the move pawn to e6, there's a, a couple of different options. I mean, you can you can castle in this position. I think this is probably one of the main options. Uh, bishop e7 is not common, I would say. So bishop e7, normally black would play the move knight to e7. I wonder if that was a mouse slip or not. Not sure. Um, maybe it wasn't. Maybe black just wants to play knight to f6 instead. In, in which case, you can also play c3. This is another plan. I can also go rook e1 first and then c3 d4. If you're not sure what to do in these positions as white, I would recommend that you either go for a setup where you go d4, takes takes c4, and set up some sort of Moroxy bind position. And I always mention that the Moroxy bind is relatively easy to play for white and it gives you a pretty safe advantage in most cases. But if you're not liking those type of positions, you can also go for c3 d4 with the two central pawns instead and these positions are also quite easy to play and give you a very nice space advantage with white as well so you can go for whichever position uh, you prefer there's also the ones where you capture the knight as well and play positionally that those are also fine So e5, knight d5, takes, takes. Or we can go d4, let's just play d4. So take, take. So take, take d5 is more or less going to be the response. So we can throw an e5 with the knight d5. It looks very similar to a Al Alpen Sicilian disposition. It looks very similar to an Alapin Sicilian. Because after d5, e5, the knight hops into the e4 square. Yeah, now I want to get rid of this knight. I want to play the move knight to c3 or knight to d2. Preferably knight to d2. Uh, I don't want to create these weaknesses in my pawn chain if I can help it. So knight d2 is preferred, but at the same time. If I play knight to d2 now, is there anything he can do? Maybe bishop to b4, but then I play a3. I mean, I, I don't think so. There's also the move bishop... Bishop to d3 attacking the knight this also this also looks interesting that more or less provokes him to play f5 i think i should put immediate pressure on this knight on e4 because if i give him too much time he's going to play the move pawn to f5 and then cement this knight into 
this e4 square and we, we don't want that to happen. I mean I don't want to give up this bishop because it's also one of my best pieces in this position but I don't want him to cement his knight onto this square which is exactly what he's trying to do here. Now I more or less have to take this because if I don't take it then the knight remains there. So I have to force the knight back and now we actually get into sort of French defense with the weak pawn on e6. Let's play the move knight to c3 in this position. So in this position we have this weakness on e5 that we can play against and we also have this weakness on e6 we can play against. So we have two weaknesses here we can target. So trading off the dark squared bishop is also very beneficial for us in this case. So playing the move bishop to g5 is absolutely fine for us. Trading dark squared bishops give us more control over over um, the square here. Now knight b4 may or may not be a threat. In any case, I don't want to allow it. Let's play the move rook to c1 to give our bishop a retreat square just in case we need to play bishop to b1. We also can set up some queen bishop batteries there with the move queen to d3. I mean, all in all, this looks like a very good French defense. I mean, white has all the pieces on the ideal squares in this case. Our bishop drops back to b1, queen is ready to move up to the d3 square. We have this e5 square for our pieces and a lot of pressure on black's position. Okay, now we can take this if he takes back with the bishop, we can play the move queen to d3. This looks very tempting to go for this check, but unless it's winning, we don't necessarily have to do it right away. Also, after takes, there is rook takes, which is another option. If queen d3, there might be rook f5. I'm not sure if it's necessarily winning right away. Uh, that's why I'm just going to play bishop h4 first. Okay, so now he's walked himself into a pin. So I can play this move queen to d3. What's his idea? He wants to go bishop f4 perhaps to attack my rook. So I can't trade off these bishops, just play bishop g3. That would be the positional looking move. Or I can go for something along the lines of queen to d3. But queen to d3 might get hit by knight b4. Then I can't play queen h7, so queen g6. I might get hit again by bishop e8. I can prepare things with a3, but if I prepare things with a3, bishop f4 comes. Then I have to go rook e2, which looks a little bit awkward, although my rook can swing across to e2. Queen can come to d3. Maybe I just play the positional move here of bishop to g3. Trade off these bishops and don't have to worry about these threats. There's also 95 actually, I just realized. 95 might have been a very good option as well. But okay, this one is simple enough. So now we have ideas on knight a4, knight c5. So we're knight a4 here. Oh, we can't get knight a4 yet, I don't think.
Uh, I set up this queen bishop battery. I, I think end games are also good for us in this situation. So I'm just gonna trade off in this scenario because I, I think if I trade off, I also stop knight g4 ideas. And you have to always watch out for these ideas where he just sacrifices the rook for the knight. These are quite dangerous. I think this is what he's trying to go for. He's going to defend this pawn. In case he goes for some rook takes f3. So the general plan in this position for white is just to trade off all the pieces and to keep to keep black with this this bad um, bishop okay which piece do we move knight to, maybe knight to e2 knight to e2 to bring the knight to f4 this is the correct correct idea So we go knight to f4, knight to d3, knight to c5. So we, we need to cover these squares. But yeah, if, if I trade off all the pieces apart from his light squared bishop, and let's say my knight, that would be the ideal scenario here for white, of course. So I don't think we're going to get that scenario very easily, but we're definitely going to try. Okay, I'm not going to trade off these bishops just yet, because this bishop is quite useful for defending my 7th rank, just in case one of the rooks or the knights ever decides to enter via there. Just keep it for now. Um, Oh, he's going for e5, which, I mean, I, I think this is the correct idea, but it does weaken his position quite a bit in the center. So it does give him this weak, weak pawn on d5, which he has to defend now. I think he might even be losing this pawn. So I can just take here, I think, and then play the move knight to f4. That can take here, because I have knight e7 check picking up the rook. It's a very useful tactic. So he he wants to take on f2, but he doesn't have time to do it in this position. Oh, that that one blunders a rook, so I can go knight e7 check. I can take the rook. And G6 check. Yeah, so I think the position started to fall apart there after black played the move pawn to e5. It's, it's a move that black often wants to play, but in that particular position, it just uh, wasn't ready to play it because the pawn on d5 was always dropping. Okay, so let's have a look at this game. So we have the start of the game going into the sort of Rosalimo, then we transpose back into some sort of Alapin defense here. 
Yeah, this, this knight was getting quite annoying. So we want to get rid of this knight as soon as possible. So that's why I was I was leaning towards something like this. But then I thought at some point he's going to play queen b6. My bishop's going to have to move anyway. So it made sense to try and move it as, as quickly as I possibly could. And just win the tempo with it. I mean, there's always these ideas where you can sacrifice a pawn. For example, like this. And without the light squared bishop, it's get it's very difficult for white to gain any attack on the king side. But then again, I am a pawn up in this position. So, okay, black has some compensation. Can play b6 and put the bishop on b7. And this may or may not be the best option even for black, just to sacrifice the pawn. It happens quite often. But um, either way, I think white has a relatively easy position, risk-free. After this move though, takes takes, I think white has a very comfortable position now. It's like a French defense as we said. Um, in these positions, I think black's idea should be to play the move knight to f4 to try and create some counterplay, sometimes setting up rook takes f3 sacrifice ideas. And then you know, bishop d6, rook takes f3, knight takes d4 type of ideas. Uh, this is what I think black should be looking to try and do. But as white, yeah, like I said, trading off these dark square bishops is really good for your position because then you gain control over this e5 square. This pawn structure is very favorable for white, of course. After this move, yeah, knight e5 was the move I probably should have played, just realized after that, because then I can cement my position in with the move pawn to f4, and the knight's even stronger in that square. It's also very difficult to dislodge this knight. So that would have been good, but I think bishop g3 is also a relatively safe move. Because trading off these bishops is quite um, useful. Now, I think the move I should have played here might have been knight something like this. Or, yeah, I was considering this, but then I didn't like some ideas with knight takes d4, but maybe it doesn't work actually. Yeah, it probably doesn't work, because if I take here... Queen takes d4, rook takes d4. Okay, I, I don't win the pawn back right away, but I do have a lot of compensation for it. Okay, queen d3, queen h5. Okay, I can keep queens on, but I thought taking the queens off was relatively safe. So I thought this end game was um, pretty easy to play as white. I just maneuver pieces towards e5 or c5, and I just prevent black from getting pieces in via c2. So keep the bishops on. And then e5 I thought it was a bit early. I was expecting maybe g5 in this position. And then I would have played knight c1 here to maneuver this knight into the c5 or e5 squares. And... It looks very good for white here. After e5 though, black is dropping some material because after this, we have to move knight to f4 and then we I capture this pawn because we have this extra tempo of knight e7 check picking up the rook on d8. So I hope you enjoyed this particular game and found it useful, especially for those of you who play sort of French defense type of pawn structures with um, either side really but um, mainly the ideas in this game were from the white side so i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching i'll see you all on the next one take care